Welcome to this video. Uh, in here, we're going to review how you would take a mesh and change it from a regular triangulated mesh to a B rep. Uh, the reason is that we want to add some splines, and only B rep splines can be done. Um, sorry, only splines can be done on the B reps mesh, and I'll explain that in a second. So, first of all, the first thing you do is you insert the mesh by going here. Once you have your mesh and it comes in, we can position it any way you want to. So here we're just gonna angle it again. So one thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we have the mesh environment available. Now that's only available if you go to the corner here and say, do not capture design history. What that does is that it enables the direct modeling module. Um, direct modeling module is a new, it's a different way of modeling. Uh, but more than anything, what it does is that it changes the environment here. So now that the, the mesh environment is available, if you don't have the mesh available, if it's not turned on, make sure under your preferences to go under the mesh environment here. Uh, under preview, make sure the mesh workspace is turned on. That way uh, it's a little, it's a beta module so that this way you will able, be able to uh, uh, record the information as you change it. So as you can see, one, uh, the mesh model that we have is made of many triangles. We don't have any way to select them. So if we go use the sculpt environment, we can add planes and layers and attach to it. But if you want to use the spline environment, we need to convert this to what's called the B-Rep. Um, just before we go ahead and do anything else, let's just change this mesh by actually looking in the body and selecting everything. We're going to change the triangulation. So this is called remesh. So the remesh will make it a more, we have a choice of making it uniform or adaptive. If you go with uniform, you'll see what happens is that the triangles now becomes equally spaced. Um, so that will make it a little easier to attach our splines, but it also changes the shape a little bit, which is okay. We don't, we don't care too much about that. We just want to get a general shape for now. The second thing we need to do is uh, we can reduce the number of triangles. And here in this menu, we have two methods of doing that. The one that we want is face count. And if we pull the lever all the way to the end, you can see how many faces we have. We have the entire mesh has 9,000 faces. So if you want to reduce the number of faces to, let's say, 6,000, when we do this, the number of triangles gets reduced. So less triangles means more ability to work faster because there's less computation to do. So once you have the mesh in the... Uh, once you change the mesh and you have, we, we, you modify it in the way that you want to. The last thing we need to do is we we can get out of this space. Uh, one last thing I wanted to show you is that you can actually select only certain areas of the mesh. So for instance, if you wanted to just minimize or change or rework this area, you can just select it. Uh, there's multiple selection tools. You can use a paintbrush or you can use the free form, meaning that you make a lasso. So the tools are very similar to what you get in Photoshop or, or uh, similar packages. So you can actually select that and then just do the changes to those areas. So for example, here we can go and say, make this adaptive and it changes that. Okay. So keep that in mind when you're doing your bottling. You, it's, it's the, the, the modifications only happen on the areas that you select. So once we go into, we're going to switch spaces now. We're going to go back into the model space. Actually, let's go to the patch space. And here, if we go under modify, we see a little button under that says mesh to B rep. So now, because the model is under 10,000 triangles, it, it says right there, 10,000 facets. Uh, it's under that, so it should have no problems to make that. So what we want is we want to make it into a B rep mesh. So we select the mesh, we go okay. And that's it. So now we got a mesh that as you can see, the cursor snaps to it. 
So what that means is that we can actually create geometry. So for instance, let's say that we want to make a few curves along the, the pathway. And for that, we're going to use the spline. We're going to make the spline appear on the top. There we go. And so to make the spline, just make sure that under the menu here, you have 3D sketch selected. Okay, so now we can actually position uh, ourselves. We're going to follow the geometry. We're going to snap to it. So for instance, if we look over here, we're going to start putting our first sketch there. Then we're going to follow over here, here. And then as we go along, we're making a 3D sketch. It's a little hard to follow, but it's there. Once we're finished, we go OK, or we stop the sketch. So you can kind of see the line. I'm going to turn the body off so you can see it where it is. Now, I notice here that I used the wrong type of line. Instead, I want to use the spline. That's what I want. So I'm going to try this again. We have to select a face to drawing. It doesn't matter because we're drawing in 3D. But from here, I'm going to pick a point, followed by another point, followed by another one. So as you can see, I'm making here, I have one spline. And on the other side, I'm going to do the same thing. But I'm not going to connect them. I'm going to keep them separate. So again, pick the spline tool. Press point. So I can get the geometry. I don't need to connect the points though. I just need to have a framework, a cage to work from. So that's two. Now I'm going to make a third type of sketch. I'm going to make a sketch kind of go on top of it. Okay. So same idea. Pick a plane to draw on. We're not going to use that plane. We're just simply going to draw in 3D. So here, and I'm going to turn off the body and I'm going to just snap directly to the piece. Then I'm going to turn it on and then I'm going to make like an, a bit of an arc connecting these shapes. Let's turn off that body again so we can see it. There it is. Let's do that again. So again, I'm pick any position on the spline. So let's say here. And now I turn my body on. So I'm going to use the geometry to guide me. So for instance, I'm going to click there, click here, and finish it off here. Now it's hard to say, see what's going on. So I'm going to turn off that shape. I'm just going to finish it off right there. So I have the basics for, for drawing a, a, a surface. Now, the last thing I need to do is I need to connect those the front and the back. So let's try that. So I'm going to connect this. Now I can use that sketch again to help me draw that line. So let's make sure that I use the right area. So from here, there it's connected. Perfect. And I'm going to do the same here. So I'm going to connect it by selecting this, doing one in the middle and then the end. Perfect. So let's turn off the body. So here's what I have. Um, in order for the uh, patch geometry to work, I have to have a closed sketch and I can have a couple of rails. These rails will determine or will help uh, uh, flesh out the geometry. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So as soon as I hit patch, I'm going to pick the four things that make this a connected body. Uh, unfortunately, you can see that it doesn't quite follow the shape. So what I need to do is I need to make sure So now that we have the shape, what we're going to do is we're going to record or we're going to make a loft out of it. So the way to do that is if you go into the loft feature, we're going to select the four shapes that make the loft and then we're going to pick the two rails. So to pick the shapes, you pick in this corner triangle and go one, two, and as you see, just like in 
other CAD software, we can see how it creates the loft. And then to constrain it within these two rails that we made, we're going to go and switch over and pick the rail 1 and rail 2. Now, the, this, this loft, this surface is not perfectly optimized, it's a little bit of pinching, but you get the general idea. And what we did is actually we're following the shape of what we had before in the mesh. Uh, generally speaking, we're, we're following, we're creating a new geometry that we can then keep editing and modeling and adding pieces until we get a final step or close model. So for instance, what we would do next is that we, we, we would probably create more surfaces, stitch them together. Then after we stitch them, we probably make a, a shape here on top to make the bottle handle extrude it, make the cut. But this gives you the general idea of how we create a lofted shape using the splines. Thank you for watching and uh, um, we'll have more videos to show other features.